General Kurt Fuller, go ahead and come up. Let's give General Fuller a warm welcome. Thank you. Kurt is the executive director of the missions base right now and really helping us walk through the present situation that we're in and keeping people like Lenny and me in line, making sure we're doing our jobs. Thank you for that. <laughs> really do appreciate that. So you have an update for us this morning. Okay, good. Well, hang on a second. Uh, as George Washington once say, al said, allow me to put on my spectacles because I've grown grown not only gray, but also almost blind in the service of my country. <laughs> but good morning, everybody. It's really great to see you all here. And my family and I want to thank you for all the support and for all your prayers. Because prayer has saved my life, literally saved my life on multiple occasions. I never take it for granted. And so thank you. Please keep it up. In the three weeks since I assumed this role, I have tried to do a lot of listening, and I've enjoyed getting to know a lot of you, and I've heard what's on your heart. If you see me or my wife, Sheila, she, Sheila, please stand. Uh, if, you, if you do see us around the base, please don't hesitate to come up and introduce yourself. But I have heard you, and I've learned a lot about the organization and some of the areas that need attention and improvement. This is a beautiful ministry, and it's full of incredibly dedicated and selfless people. And the fruit of it is here for us all to see. But there are a lot of things that we can improve on. And I've heard enough and seen enough to know that there are some issues here that need to be addressed, and some of them urgently. Now, I meet daily with all the division heads, with the CFO and the COO, and we're mapping out some significant adjustments to the organizational structure, and we look forward to announcing those soon. Before we go back to our mountain homestead, I want to tell you that I'm committed to accomplishing three things. The first is to get to the bottom of all these allegations, not just those about Mike Bickle, but also those that are now directed to the organization as a whole. Number two, I promise that I will leave this place better than I found it. And number three, I'm committing to, committed to doing everything I can to ensure that day and night prayer continues. Thank you. Now, I want to ask Eric Voltz to provide you with a short update on our progress since we were last together. <clears throat> the David House Agency has been an invaluable resource during this crisis. And Eric has my complete trust and confidence as we all work together to find the unvarnished truth and to move on to forgiveness and healing for everyone who has been impacted by this. Eric, okay. oh, here he is. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. I like that vest, General. That is stylish. Good morning, you guys. It's nice to be with you. Um, this is going to be brief. Uh, it won't be uncomfortable like some of the other updates. Um, it's one of the most challenging parts of this job is being associated with uncomfortable feelings. Um, but uh, I also just want to thank you guys for, for the messages and the support and the prayers. This case has definitely presented some unique challenges, so please keep praying for everyone who's involved. Um, so since General Fuller and the executive committee took over the roles and responsibilities of the executive directorship on December 22nd, that was just three weeks ago. I know that's a mouthful, um, but it's really only been three weeks. And 
the first thing that I want to just ask everyone to keep in mind is when there are reports of allegations of misconduct and abuse, especially when it has to do with leaders, it really can present some of the hardest challenges that a ministry could ever deal with. It's common for organizations to not know how to properly respond right away. Sometimes reports can actually be ignored or not taken seriously. And uh, there are also times when uh, in unintentionally the way that an organization responds can actually uh, harm people that were involved. The sooner that an allegation is addressed, the more the potential for trauma and pain in the community can be avoided. These are important realities, and this leadership is keenly aware of those realities. I will say that to date, IHOPKC has appropriately handled this case, considering the cards that it has been dealt. And I believe there will be a day when the diligence and the care in which this organization has handled this will be very clear, but today is not the day for that discussion. As General Fuller stated, he is committed to finding the truth so that IHOPKC can be in a position to steward a godly and righteous process of healing and reconciliation for all affected parties, both at an individual and a community-wide level. So one of the first things that General Fuller did was he ordered a historic review of reported misconduct. That review is far from over, but so far we can say that for an organization this size with 25 years of operating history, over 20,000 20, staff who've served here, statistically speaking, the number of known incidents is actually quite low. At the same time, we can confidently say that a few of those reported incidents, likely they were not handled properly. From what we can tell, most of those incidents happened under the watch of leaders who are no longer here, but that doesn't change IHOPKC's responsibility to thoroughly examine and address each case. Some of the cases are clear cut and others are not. So we need to be very careful to not blur the lines between the two, and it's gonna take some time to make those determinations. Regardless, on behalf of IHOPKC, I want to apologize in advance to anyone who has experienced harm here or whose reports were not handled properly. It will take time, but General Fuller will get to the bottom of all of this. For context, in 2018, the Grace investigation, which most of you I know are aware of at this point, that investigation took almost a year to complete and it was a narrow scope, only looking at one case. So uh, we will certainly move as fast as we can, but professional investigations must be done according to a certain, certain legal and ethical standards, and they must be conducted in a way that doesn't cause harm to the parties involved. And of course here we're talking about 25 years of history, uh, and General Fuller has only been on the job for three weeks. So. What he's accomplished in this time frame is remarkable, but we really want to ask people to just be realistic about the time frames in front of us. There have actually been a few um, new reports of misconduct that have come in in the last three weeks, and they were very swiftly uh, dealt with and addressed. And as we've mentioned before, IHOPKC is working with HR experts. So moving forward, no report will be ignored and no form of abuse will be tolerated. General Fuller and the division heads have also been hosting meetings with base leaders to provide uh, private updates, untangle some misunderstandings, receive feedback, do Q and A's, and also talk about what can be expected for the near-term future here at IHOPKC. Uh, I've been able to participate in some of those meetings, and though some of those discussions have not been easy, we do appreciate the honest questions and the pursuit for truth by everyone who's participating. Um, we've also been able to have some one-on-one -on -one meetings 
with uh, those who have expressed strong critique. And uh, we appreciate those conversations. And as schedules uh, permit, we'll continue to have those meetings. So please don't stop requesting those. So where are we at with regards to the investigation into the allegations of Mike Bickle? IHOP KC's independent investigator has been hard at work for six weeks. She has been retained to conduct a truly independent investigation, and she has the qualifications to find out the truth. IHOP KC has also confirmed that a final report will be released directly from the investigator. That means that IHOP KC is not going to have the ability to see the report first and edit the content before it gets released. It will be independently and directly released from the investigator. Though we don't know the details, we know that the investigator has conducted numerous interviews with individuals who claim to have information related to the allegations against Mike Bickle. But we also know that she has not been permitted to speak to any of the alleged victims or members of the advocate group. And as a result, IHOP KC still has not been able to verify the allegations that were presented by the advocate group last October. But IHOP KC wants the truth. We're going to get the truth no matter what it is. But the reality is this. In order for this to work, there really are two requirements that we need to see met. The first, the investigation must have the ability to be truly independent. And we have that. But number two, the investigation must legitimately appear to those as truly independent, to those that are involved. It has to appear to be truly independent to the parties involved. So those are related but not identical concepts. So we have number one covered. We have an independent investigator. But number two is the crux. We need community buy-in. IHOP's conviction is that a complete investigation should be conducted into the allegations of misconduct, and we believe our investigator would be able to accomplish this. But the advocate group does not feel comfortable with our approach, and we want them to feel comfortable. We cannot verify the allegations against Mike Bickle without their cooperation, and this community cannot find rest until it has the truth about those allegations. So General Fuller, has met with key members of the advocate group on multiple occasions and in multiple settings in an effort to hear their concerns and establish trust. And with authorization and direction from General Fuller, the David House Agency has been working privately with the consultant of the advocate group on a step-by-step -step approach toward a mutually agreed upon investigation moving forward. This would be one that the alleged victims would have the ability to agree on and accept. To be clear, we have not yet reached an agreement, but we are hopeful that we will. IHOPKC's focus remains a thorough and complete investigation of the reported allegations, and IHOPKC pledges to then implement any and all policy changes procedures, and cultural changes to ensure that IHOPKC does not travel down this difficult road again. So we ask that you cover this process in prayer, especially in the coming weeks. Jesus bless you guys. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, General Fuller.